Lesson 30, graphing functions. So what are functions? Well, first let's review what a linear equation was from our last lesson. Just a linear equation, just an equation that has two or more variables. And so the linear equation has a, their equation whose graph is a line. And so if you have a linear function, there, it's a function whose graph is a line. It's a straight line. It's got a straight line with it. Nonlinear functions are just those functions that have two variables in it, but it's a curved line. So it's a U or parabola shaped. So we would call that a quadratic function. Or if you have a V shaped function, that would be the absolute value function. So here in the bottom, you can see a linear function and a linear equation. They both use um, mx plus b, but the only difference is beginning the function of x and y. And the function of x and y just mean the same thing. And as a review, the slope is always your m and your y-intercept, where it is across the y-axis, is your b. Let's take a look at an example. Using tables to graph. So before you you do some graphing, usually you start off with a table to get, to get used to graphing and where do we get our points. So here if we have y equals x, you choose any x values because x is your, your independent variable and your y is going to be your dependent because it's dependent on whatever x is going to be in there. So if we put a bunch of x's in, it's going to give us a y on the outside. And so if y equals x, whatever x is, y is going to be. So they put a 0 in, y has to be 0. You put a 1 in, y is 1. And so they plotted those points on here and drew a line through those points. Is it a function? For it to be a function, you can only, one x can have only one y value. And so you can use the vertical line test. And here you can see they're using the vertical line test. It only crosses this line once right here. If you did another vertical line test like here, it only crosses once right there. So as long as one vertical line touches the graph only in one place, it would be a function. So yes, this is a function. Is this linear, which means is it a straight line? Yes, it is. It's a straight line. So we would say this is a linear function. This next one, y equals x squared. Here, they're just writing wherever the x is. And so they choose, they chose their own x values in here. So if you put a negative 2 in there, the negative 2 squared is 4. Put a negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1. Put a 0, 0 squared is 0. But you notice that they put the positive forms of each of those numbers. That is important when you're using quadratics, because if you don't, then you're not going to see the curved shape of your graph. And all quadratics have a U-shaped or, or a parabola-shaped graph. So you put a 1 in there, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. And so you can see when they plotted the points, it makes a U-shaped graph. So is this a function? Well, you can do is you can use the, the vertical line test. It only crosses once there. 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 So yes, this is a function. Is it linear or nonlinear? Since it's got a curve in it, it's nonlinear. Next one here, we're going to use a table. We're going to graph one ourselves. So here I gave you some x values. Again, you can use your own. Um, I usually, usually use the smallest numbers so I don't have to have a huge, huge graph. So I chose four, uh, five numbers, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So if I put a negative 2 in for x, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 5 is a negative 9. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7. 
0 times 2 is 0, minus 5 is negative 5, 1 times 2 is 2, minus 5 is negative 3, 2 times 2 is 4, minus 5 is negative 1. Now if I come to my graph and plot them, negative 2 and negative 9, so I go to negative 2, down to negative 9, that would be here, negative 1 and negative 7, so negative 1, negative 7 would be here, 0 and negative 5 would be here, actually these are minor, minor off a little bit, so negative 2 and negative 9, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, this would be 9, and then negative 1 and 7, there, this would be 0 and negative 5, 1 and negative 3 be here, and then 2 and negative 1 would be here, and then I can just draw, draw a line. Now let, let me do a different different line for that one. Let me put my points back in there. There. So we got to put my points back in there. So 1 and negative 3 be here, and then 2 and negative 1. And then now let's, let's draw a line. So my line would look something similar to that. And we can answer the question, is it a function, is it 1x for every 1y? If you use the vertical line test, it does. So it is a function. It is a straight line, so it's a linear function. Next one. Here's the same one, but this one's a quadratic. So if I chose my points here and put them in there, negative 2 squared is 4, 4 times 3 is 12. Negative 1 squared is 1 times 3 is 3. 0 squared is 0 times 3 is 0. 1 squared is 1 times 3 is 3. 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12. So I can plot my points here. I got negative 2 and 12. Negative 2 and 12 would be up here. Negative 1 and 3 would be here. 0 and 0 would be in the center of the origin. We got 1 and 3 would be here. And then 2 and 12 would be up here. And I can draw my parabola. And there you have your graph. Is it a function? And I do a vertical line test. You can see that it is a function. It only crosses. You only have one x value for every one y value. Uh, vertical line test only crosses the graph in one place. It is nonlinear because it's got a curve in it. Our next one. Here we put a negative 2 in. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 plus 5 is 1. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2 plus 5 is 3. 0 times 2 is 0 plus 5 is 5. 1 times 2 is 2, plus 5 is 7. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 5 is 9. This one was similar to the other one we did, but it was a minus 5 instead of a plus 5. Let's plot our points. We got negative 2 and positive 1. Negative 2, positive 1 is here. Negative 1 and positive 3. 0 and 5. 1 and 7. 2 and 9. And I can draw my line. 
answer the question, is it, a, is it a function? Yes. It only crosses in each place once. You'll know because if there's a dot on top of a dot, straight up and down, then you know that it's not a function. And it's a straight line, so it is linear. Next one, x squared plus 1. So 2 squared is 4, plus 1 is 5. Negative 1 squared is 1, plus 1 is 2. 0 squared is 0, plus 1 is 1. 1 squared is 1, plus 1 is 2. 2 squared is 4, plus 1 is 5. I come to my graph. I have negative 2 and 5, so negative 2 down up to 5. Here, negative 1 and 2. Here, 0 and 1. Here, 1 and 2. Here, 2 and 1. Actually, this shouldn't be, this shouldn't be 1. Negative 2 squared is 4, plus 1 is 5. So I have 2, 5. Here, draw my parabola. Is it a function? It only crosses in one place, so yes. Is it linear? No, it's not linear because it's got a curve in it. Next one, matching a graph to a table. So here you can determine what kind of graph would it be. So the first thing I would do is look at the slope. Because the slope is going to tell you if it's, if it's positive or negative. This one's got positive slope positive slope, negative slope. Remember, if it's a positive slope, it's a positive slope, it's going upwards. If it's a negative slope, it's going downward. Okay, so this one, table three, has a negative slope, so it's got to go down from left to right. The only graph that's going down from left to right is graph two. Then the next one, I need to, I can easily check this one by checking my y-intercept. The top one, table one, it's crossing at a positive four. So if I look at my graph on the y-axis, crosses positive four, that would be graph three. So this one is graph three. That would leave me with table two going to the top one because it crosses the, the y-axis at negative 1, which would be right there. So those would be my graphs on that one. Let's match these. Here, they both have the same y-intercept. They both have positive slopes. So now we have to determine which one goes where. So we can start looking at some of these points. So if we look at the top one, the top one, a negative 6 and a negative 1. If I go to a negative 6 on the x-axis and go down to negative 1, that would be about here. If I went to negative 6 over here, negative 1 would be here. So which one did it land on the line? Graph 2. So that would be this one. That would leave the second one to over here. And I can check this one negative 3 and negative 8. So if I went to negative 3, down to negative 8, that would be here, which is on that line. So that's just a quick way of matching a table to a graph. Next one. Here we have three equations. One has an absolute value, one has a square root. So now, how do we determine these? So equation A has to be a straight line because that's y equals mx plus b, that's a linear function or linear equation. The only one that has a straight line is graph 2. And we can always verify it because it crosses at positive 3. Slope is 1, so if they go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, the slope makes that straight line, so it's everything's on that line, so I know equation A goes with graph 2. Equation B for this one, absolute value. 
So whatever I, number I put in for x, my y is always going to be a positive number. So it has to be, I could put a negative 4 in, and it will give me 4 plus 3, which is 7. Negative 4, 7 would be here, so this would have to be graph 3. And the equation C has to be graph 1, because your radicand here, whatever x is, has to be a positive. It cannot be less than 0. And the only one that has uh, numbers greater than or equal to 0 is right here on the y on the x-axis. So this is 0. So that one has to be graph 1. Other ones matching the equation y equals negative 2x squared to the correct graph. Now, because it's a negative slope, I know that my graph's got to open downward. The only one that opens downward is graph 2. If it was a positive, then it opens upwards. And we can always test it out by if we put a, let's just say put a, we put a positive 2 in here for x. 2 squared is 4. 4 times a negative 2 is a negative 8. So if I go to 2, negative 8, that would be right here, which is landing on here. If I went to 2, negative 8 on here, you would get right here, which is not on the graph. So that's another quick way of determining based on what signs in the front here. Identifying domain and range. Domain is always talking about your x terms. What is the limits that your x can possibly be? The range is always referring to what your y values can possibly be. So in this example, y equals the square root of x plus 1. The domain has to be greater than or equal to 1. And why? Because you cannot find the square root of a negative number. So if you look at your graph, it begins here. It never goes to the left. And so when I go down to the x-axis, this is 0. So it can equal 0, but it's greater than because it's going to the right. So it's greater than, x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Now if x is 0, what is the lowest possible y you can have? Well, the square root of 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. So your y has to be greater than 1, because it starts here at 1, and it goes above 1 for each time. Let's take a look at another one. So identify the domain and range. What are the limits? What is the smallest or biggest x value you can have? When you have a quad quadratic, you always want to find the low point or the high point. So the low point is right here. That's going to tell me a limit. So but if we're looking at the domain, the domain, you can see for a parabola, it keeps going out gradually. So it keeps going in both directions. And every single number that you put in is going to land on the graph. So we would say the domain is all real numbers. So the domain for every parabola is always going to be all real numbers. Every single number will work. I can put a number in and it will give me a y value that will land on the parabola. The range, however, I look at the lowest point here. The lowest point on the y-axis is a negative 2. It never goes below a negative 2. So I know my y has to be greater than or equal to a negative 2. Look at the domain range of these functions. So for this one, the domain on the x-axis, here's the beginning of the graph. If I go up to the x-axis, it starts at 0. So I would say the domain, the x has to be greater than or equal to 0 because it keeps going to the right. It never goes to the left, never goes to the negatives on the x. And then the range, it starts at a negative 1, and it keeps going up. So y has to be greater than or equal to a negative 1. It 
not be lower than a negative 1. The domain on this side. The domain on this side, you have you have a, a parabola shape, so this is all real numbers. And my range, it has a, a low point, and that would be at 1. So y has to be greater than or equal to 1. Because it doesn't go, it doesn't go below 1 on the y-axis. So that would be our domain and range on that one. And a couple more problems. The soccer team raises money by washing cars. They charge $5 per car and spend a total of $4 on soap. The table shows the money they raise. Make a graph and use it to find the amount they raise by washing seven cars. Write the rule in function notation and use it to check the answer. So this one has been done for you. The graph is made for you. The table is done for you. We would need to find out how much the amount they would raise by washing seven cars. So on the bottom, you know, the number of cars raised. In our table, we can't see it, but on our graph, we can. So you go to seven cars and go straight up this point. So now if we go to the left, you would say $30, $30 they would have. So now we would have to write a, a function for that one. So how do we find the function? So we need to write this in function notation. So the function of x equaling, so they charge $5 per car. And so the number of cars is our x. So $5 per car, so it'd be 5x. And they spend a total of $4 on soap. So you have to take out that amount of money that you spent on the soap to get uh, to start washing the car. So I got to subtract the $4 so I know how much profit I would make. So our function would be the function of x equals 5x minus 4. And we can always check our answer. So if you did one car, 5 times 1 is 5, minus 4 is $1 raise. 2 times 5 is 10, 10 minus 4 is $6 raise. So that function can help us determine how much money you can make depending on the number of cars you wash. And the last one, the table shows the number of emails history class classes sent to their senators. Make a graph and use it to find how many emails were sent from eight classes. Write the rule in function notation and use it to check your answer. So here we have our, our table. So we're gonna plot those on here. So let's look at our graph here. You can see it's blank, but we can we can adjust the numbers here. So we're going to count by fours on our x-axis. So this will be or count by one. So one, two, three, four, and then we'll count by thirties going up. So this is 30, 60, 90, 120, and let's plot our points. So one and 30, two and 60, three and 90. 4 and 120. We can easily draw our line, our points. So there's our graph. Now the rule. Okay, so we have to be in a function notation. So a function of x equaling. So now we need where does it cross the y axis? So when it crosses the y axis, that one we can't tell from, from our graph at this point, at least right now. So we can we can find the find the slope. Okay, the slope you can see if we use the slope formula going from one point to the next point, we're adding 30 each time. So you're adding 30 here, adding 30 here, adding 30 here. So that's gonna be 30 times x the number of classes. But if we went the other direction, if there were zero classes, you would have to subtract 30 which would be just 
zero. So really, it would cross the, X, the y axis at zero, zero. We don't need to put plus zero. So this would be our function. So that is a little bit of a long lesson on, on graphing, uh, but that will get us prepared for the second half of the year.